Hey there, guys, and welcome to another video. I haven't really been so active in making videos, but I'm back and I'm so excited. I genuinely am very excited to be making videos again. If you can hear, there's a cat here in the background that I'm sure will make many appearances <laughs> throughout this video, but I wanted to talk about caregiving and the, the 10 lessons that I've learned since I started caregiving for my grandfather back in February of 2017. So we are over two and a half years of pretty full time being um, with him every day. When I'm home, I'm definitely in some capacity taking care of him, whether that's just the night time and I'm busy during the day, but often for most of that time it's been, if I wasn't traveling, I was home day and night taking care of him. And for the first year I was up at his house and my parents' house is just down the road, so then after a uh, bigger accident that he had and he had to go to the hospital, then um, we brought him down to, to my parents' house, which was a good thing and obviously made things just that much harder. So yeah, but it's been a really fun journey and I'm looking forward to sharing more. I've documented pretty much the whole experience and yeah, I'm excited to make a documentary which I've kind of already begun sorting files and figuring out um, you know, the storyline and what exactly it's going to accomplish why is why is this a necessary thing to be putting out into the world so I'm super excited for that but for this video I am gonna start with the first lesson that I learned and that would be patience I think all throughout our lives we are learning more and more about patience and how to show up for people but in this specific instance, I've been gifted in some ways to slow down even more, to be even more patient with someone. Um, you know, the, the similarities between, you know, a child growing up versus an elderly person, there's a lot of similarities, but um, it has a different feeling um, I don't have kids of my own, of course, but I've taken care of my niece and nephew and taken care of lots of different kids throughout my life. And um, I definitely sense a lot of similarities again, but there's a difference when those things are experienced in relation to someone who um, can carry anger, has already lived a whole life, um, you know, sometimes, you know, you talk about past lives and those kinds of things. And, you know, we maybe we do have past lives. I don't know. I don't know what you believe. But, um, you know, kids sometimes come in with a certain amount of uh, knowledge already in them or challenge already in them that wasn't cultivated by the parents. But for some reason, they attracted this type of person into their lives. So I preface all this just to say that some challenging things besides just patience in terms of showing up and being there for his process and his de decline. One thing is just walking behind him. How difficult it is for me now after two and a half years. Didn't used to bug me very much that he walked slow and now all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, can someone else be right there next to him so that, you know, I'll do the whole bathroom situation, get him to bed, but I'll get him up. But that process that takes, you know, 10, 15 minutes is just 
been super challenging lately, but you know, all super great lessons. Things take time and we'll all be there at some point in our lives. Who knows when, when our time is right, but we will all get there. One other example I can think of is, you know, often when we're having a conversation and we're talking to someone, I've sat down and had many conversations with him, but there's that instinct to fill words in. So he's starting to say a sentence and he's forgetting things and he's not able to say what he wants to. But often before I even get to the point of actually, uh, you know, him just getting so frustrated that he can't say anything, I might say what maybe he could have remembered before, you know, he was given a chance to remember it. I think it's really important, especially for the process of their um, disease. If you're dealing with someone who does have something like Alzheimer's or dementia, for them to actually allow that natural process to happen, which can be really hard um, to just kind of let it happen like that. And, you know, I know that there's a lot of moral, moral issues, like what is right and you know how do you deal with someone who's losing themselves losing their ability to take care of themselves and at what point are you interjecting in a negative way i'm gonna stop there because i could go on for too long on these topics but i really want to get to you know these other lessons that i've learned through caregiving so the second one is the, the process witnessing and the lessons learned through the reflection and witnessing of these losses. And so the more I've witnessed my grandfather's gradual decline over the course of two and a half years, this, is, this hasn't been a, you know, visit grandpa for a week and then another year visit grandpa for a week. It's not like that. I've been there. I've witnessed it all. And part of what's so challenging is just the series of losses that you have in your life leading up to the ultimate loss being losing your life and dying. I think what a lot of people fear is that the series that leads up to the suffering, the loss of, that leads up to the actual death. I don't think people are as afraid of, of death as they are of what leads up to it. Knowing that, you know, you'll you lose your hearing, your ability to eat, your ability to see, your ability to do everything for yourself, really, ultimately. Your ability to drive is usually the first big one that gets cut out of your life. And then it's like, okay, can they take care of themselves? Can they take a shower safely? Can they eat the right foods? Are they gonna remember to take their meds? Um, all this kind of stuff, you know, it all gradually leads up. And you know, we, we don't all die that way, but the process of aging, which I would say maybe the majority of us go through. I don't know what the statistics are, but I guess through this process, I've, I've witnessed and learned how difficult aging really is. And also it's come into my life and has made me appreciate what I have so much more. And being kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum, being that in my life, I keep gaining things. You keep, things keep adding to my life. And it's all about perspective. Again, you could say maybe there's a really understanding person who's aging and they can see maybe their loss of driving being um, that they've gained a new whatever that may be, but most people don't see it that way. And who knows, I don't know how I'll see it if and when that happens to me. But as of right now, where I am in my life, I feel like I'm just gaining more and more things in my life. And 
it's it's easy to feel like um, life has purpose and meaning because I feel like I'm helping. I feel like I have things I can do that can better other people, that can better the world, that can better myself. And I'm not sure, I can't even remember if the, there's one of the ones that I'm going to talk about, but this idea of actually um, helping other people is a big one as you get older. You want to help people. This has come up multiple times throughout conversations with grandpa and he wants to feel useful and be um, of service to others. It's a natural place for us to be and we want to give naturally. It seems like we're happiest when we're giving to other people. And so that's also another hard, hard loss is the literal inability to help other people in ways that we typically would help them. So the third thing is pretty simple, one that we've probably all heard, but not to take life for granted. Life is just so much better when we really appreciate what we've been gifted with. And I think too many people aren't really appreciating our lives for what they are. And that's probably enough on that topic as we've all heard that one before. So the first lesson has to do with elder care and our elder care system and how elders are treated and viewed in our society. It's difficult to think that there would be human beings that could be viewed as um, tossaways, as people who don't, don't matter in society, who don't serve a purpose. But I think where we're at now, our relationship to our elders, we kind of feel that way, most of us, that they are just a nuisance to us. They're prohibiting us from living our life in some way and not allowing whatever we want to happen to happen. And I don't really know where it stems from necessarily, but you know, go back 100 years, 200 years, grandparents lived with their families and it was kind of like, you know, the kids and the grandparents type type relationship and having having younger people around is so beneficial for older people and I've witnessed as my niece and nephew have come over and played with my grandfather a little bit um, and even I have um, you know it brings so much joy and lightens the mood and makes things just easier and that's kind of what they bring for all of us. But now thinking that there's, you know, tons of people living in nursing homes that, you know, don't have one-on-one -on -one care. It's like my grandpa has three main people taking care of him right now. We tag team, I do most nights, my parents on and off throughout different days. They'll take a night, you know, maybe once a week now. Didn't used to be that way, but, um, you know, it wears on your body. But he's got three people taking care of him. It's so difficult to imagine how a system could give care like we're giving to him. And I know they can't unless people volunteer to come in and sit and talk with people or play games. We all still need meaning in our lives and no matter what age. Looking at the system we have now, it doesn't work. And nurses are overworked, underpaid, there's not enough of them. There doesn't seem to be a right answer. I guess my answer would be, you know, a couple people per person need to take care of elders, but we don't, we literally can't do that because of the world in which we live and the amount of money it would cost. But maybe thinking about, is there some better way of doing this? And so part of what I'm trying to now do and wanting to do 
is to create more of a, a plan, more of a structure in which it allows and encourages younger people to interact with their elders and grandparents in their lives or parents. You know, asking questions that matter and having conversations that will um, help bring more clarity and purpose into their lives because it's difficult. It's really difficult when you're in pain, when you are in physical or emotional pain. And, you know, one conversation can make their day. One hello, one hug can make their day. There's a lot more to add there, but I just don't really want to get into it. But it's it's difficult for me. It's a, it's a lesson I learned while my grandfather was in rehab. And, you know, I, I don't unappreciate or um, I'm not ungrateful for what the nursing homes have been able to do and how they've been able to care for him. It's just, we have so many more resources here to care for, he, for him even better. And, you know, I think probably everyone deserves that. But again, this has been a really difficult process for my whole family. And so I know, I understand why you would put a person in a home, in a nursing home or an assisted living or wherever they go. It's hard work, physically, emotionally, spiritually. It's just really difficult. And of course, there's times where I think, God, it would be so much easier if he, would, he was just in a home. But that's not, that's not what I want. And luckily, I'm still able to show up and help. And we'll see what the future holds. But this is not to say that everyone needs to be doing what I'm doing. It's just an understanding and a, a lesson that I learned, I guess, through this process. All right, so the fifth thing is empathy and compassion, which relates to every aspect of life. The lesson mainly being, you know, we can never understand what someone else is going through as much as we can try, which try we should, as long as that's what the other person wants. We can never fully get, you know, we, we are not ever going to be experiencing firsthand what someone else is going through. We can only know what our experiences. And so I guess to take light life more lightly and not to be so serious or stuck up in your ways or thinking that you're right. You know, we all live different lives and depending on how we've lived them and the choices we make and the programs that we have, we all come to different conclusions and it's not, it's not our job to judge them as right or wrong. It's our job to accept other people for who they are and for sharing what they believe. All right, so the sixth thing is loneliness. This is something for my grandfather and for the person caregiving. It's lonely to live in this world at times and, you know, specifically people who have lost their partners in life and they've lived an independent life for a long time you know you can't overstate how nice it is to have someone to talk to or just even be there they don't need to talk to you just having someone in your presence that you could talk to if you wanted to I know that's probably the biggest gift I've been and my family has been able to provide my grandfather with besides the physical care of what it takes to take care of him. It's the emotional care and attention we've been able to give him and the conversations we've been able to have. And I really do think he's worked through a lot of things that may have caused him a lot of pain earlier on in his life. And so it's just opening the door and asking questions and sitting there and actually listening to someone makes 
all the difference. And from the caregiver's perspective, boy, is it difficult to try to relate to people my own age after witnessing all, all of this and what I've learned through this experience. It's like, you know, I can sit there and, and relate to what they're going through and understand, you know, the stresses of college and finding your way in the world. Um, which, of course, I feel that I've felt that and I don't necessarily really feel that anymore as I've um, kind of worked through that and I've developed enough things that I really love to do that I'm not worried so much about, you know, what I'm going to be doing with my life. It feels pretty clear to me, luckily. But it's hard to pick up the phone and call, you know, someone who's at college and talk about what I'm going through when, you know, they have no clue but to just listen to what I'm saying. They can't relate in any way. So there's a loneliness in that, that it's been more difficult to relate to friends. And that's not to say that I haven't been able to find other people to talk to. And obviously my family, we're going through the same thing. It always is helpful to talk to them about what what's going on, what we're witnessing and how we're feeling. But yeah, it's something that I hope never happens to you. But if it does, it's just, it's kind of a, a helplessness feeling. It's not hopelessness. It's just like, you can't change it. Um, and so there's loneliness in that, I guess, in the fact that it's hard to relate to other people. There's loneliness when, you know, he might burst out and have an episode. But, you know, that's all just part of the journey, I guess. And that's part of what you sign up for, it almost seems like, is a little bit of like, a lot of bit of reflection and processing yourself what's going on because as much as it's their journey it's so much your journey as well and you know you can make it what you want it to be but for those of us who are more reflective and um, interested in growth we tend to kind of sink into ourselves with experiences like this and so you can get too consumed within yourself. And I think that can also lead to loneliness and some difficulty just in showing up and being able to really be in your life, not just be consumed by their life all the time. So the seventh thing is dealing with emotions, specifically anger, frustration, um, sadness too. I think when you're witnessing something, someone at the end of their, their life, who knows how long, maybe he'll live another five years, maybe he'll live, you know, a few more months. It's really dependent on his will and how he's wanting to show up. But it feels as though your emotions kind of have extremes. And so either he's really angry or he's really happy or he's really sad or really frustrated. And so when you're dealing with someone like that, it can be challenging, but also really rewarding. I mean, I've had two and a half years of this practice of dealing with someone whose emotions are like this. I've never been with someone or been in the presence of someone really that has something like that. We're all really balanced and my family's really balanced. And so it's been an interesting process and good lessons for me to learn. We aren't all the same and we don't all deal with emotions the same ways, but at the beginning and end of our lives, it feels like we're really challenged with being able to, kitty stop, hey. We are challenged with being able to really process our emotions well and for ourselves and not blame others so it feels like wow you know i've just gone through this i've been able to handle him and it hasn't bothered me too much i've been able to process of course there's moments where i get frustrated myself and angry and um, sad but 
you know, ultimately I've been able to handle him and I can't imagine a situation where someone's getting angry at me that I really couldn't handle. You, I've worked, I feel like I've worked with the whole spectrum of emotions and so um, there's a lot of gifts just in that alone as well. So along the same lines, I lesson eight is these the cycles of of good and bad. And so I I guess I kind of already addressed this. Um, but yeah, being able to witness and experience and handle situations where things are really good, things are really bad, and it just like goes like this. And you are on that roller coaster too. <laughs> and being able to not only help them, but also help yourself while you're going through this situation is really important. And so um, that's definitely been a lesson I've learned throughout this caregiving process. So lesson nine would be the fact that we die alone. As much as this process has been my process and as much as I'm trying to help him and it is helping me, I've learned all these lessons, I've um, changed my perspective, I view life so differently now than I once did, I can't help him not die, which is what he wants right now. I can't help him uh, with his hips not hurting. I can't help make whatever dreams he's having go away. There are a lot of things I can do. I help him go to bed, go to the bathroom, get him food, um, entertain him for a bit. But ultimately this is his journey and he's, while I can hold his hand at times, I can't follow him where he's gonna end up going. That realization is humbling. And of course, along with that comes, you can't take anything with you, let alone anyone. So all these things that I have ac accumulated and have put values on in some ways really don't matter. It's not that they don't matter. I guess it's made me question more and more what is essential in my life. What in my life is totally necessary and what is... what's not necessary. What is just because my family says I need this or my friend really likes this so I kind of look up to them and I need this too. We don't get to take anything with us. And so spending time and energy thinking about things is not of value. And this idea that we die alone, you know, isn't at all to say that we shouldn't value other people or relationships. But I think it's really important that we do stay true to what it is that we're feeling at all times and that we recognize that at different times in our lives we might be creating you know a shared existence with someone or many other people and that's a beautiful thing but always making sure that you're putting some sort of value on whatever your experience is in the moment it's this idea of of what is essential what is What's necessary? What are non-negotiables for me? You know, everything I've learned seems to have come to me in some sort of a reflective place, whether that be journaling or just kind of sitting by myself or those moments before you fall asleep or those moments in between taking care of grandpa. It's just like, you know, this is my experience and I have to own up to it. After a certain age, it's like, nope, this is my life. And this is not to blow my life up in any egotistical way, but just to take ownership for 
my past and understand how it's gotten me here and to make conscious decisions moving forward and accept that those decisions are coming from me. Nobody else can force me to make those decisions and if you feel like someone is then you need to take a step back because that's not right either. So the last thing, the tenth lesson or realization I've come to is just how difficult it is to take care of yourself while taking care of someone else. Wow, is it hard to try to, you know, fit in the things that you might do for yourself when there's someone who needs your 100% full attention. It, it really is like having a baby in a lot of ways. This is no disrespect to him and there's differences because he doesn't swear at you or say mean things and he hasn't, a baby hasn't lived a whole life but there's a lot of similarities and the difficulty in being able to show up and take care of yourself I believe is definitely there within um, being a parent, having a young child and you know, how do you meet your own needs when there's someone who's fully dependent on you? It's just, it's a challenge and one that I didn't really realize how difficult it was going to be, to be honest. I knew this, this journey was going to be challenging and I really did think that I would learn a lot and a lot of these lessons that I have learned I kind of felt the beginnings of a couple weeks into taking care of him because you know how can you not start to feel things shift and move in within you when you know, you're witnessing such a, a transition um, in someone's life so a lot of challenges a lot of not that I didn't have respect for people, but I just, I understand so much better how to take care of other people, what it means to show up for others, and what I need at the end of the day. I mean, I just had a big episode of being sick myself, and it was a real, like, you know, it was just a good check for me to be like, if you're not sleeping for several weeks in a row, you need to chill out and get some sleep. And not that there weren't opportunities and that my family wasn't offering because they always do. I just kind of have the mentality that I want to tough it out and I refuse to let them take a night. And so it's more me being able to accept um, the help more than it not being there. Um, but yeah, I just got really sick and I was out, you know, for a week. Couldn't take care of him, had to have some help myself. And so, yeah, I guess really it's just you need to be able to ch take care of yourself and whatever that means and however you can ask for help, I would say ask for it because you know what you need better than anyone else. And so if you don't ask or even better if you have someone who you know needs help ask them what you can do to help them don't don't imply what you think they need ask them what they need and they will hopefully tell you i know i've i've struggled with this and i've experienced it when telling friends and stuff about about what i'm going through that they all of a sudden try to fix my life and i'm like i don't have a problem i never said i had a problem um, all I wanted to do, do, do was share my experience, what I'm going through, and I don't need you to fix anything, I don't need you to help. What I need right now is for you to sit and listen and just hear what I'm going through. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope this wasn't too long. I know it was a long video. I don't know if I've ever filmed such a long video, but it was a good one, and I have a lot to say about it, and I wanted to say it all. So I hope you got some value from it and I hope this kitty wasn't too distracting. Um, if you have any further questions or comments, I'm hoping by the time this video is published, I will have a 
um, a free resource linked below that you could share with people you know, you could get yourself um, a, a download a copy of questions and exercises that I would suggest doing with um, people who are aging. And, you know, some of them may apply to you, some may not. My, my situation is a little more extreme and more advanced than um, most, and so some questions might not apply. Or, for example, playing balloon with your grandparent or your parent might not be the best idea, but if you have someone who really can't move very well and can't walk fast at all, that might be a really great thing to um, recenter themselves, have a little fun, and just focus attention on something for for a little bit of time. So anyway, that's it for this video. I will be sharing more soon. You can check out my Patreon if you want to get exclusive content and videos um, that I post only there. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye, guys. How can I help you, Kitty? How can I help you? I just want some pets and some love. That's what you want. Life is wonderful.